morning, dobre utra. It is a uh, nice day so far. It's kind of sunny. Sunny but cloudy. So when I was told here it was always cloudy, we were really worried, but it's actually sunny and cloudy at the same time. It's still kind of bright out, which is nice. We are still working on paperwork. A bunch of comments are like, when are you going to learn Russian? Um, I've been here for three weeks. It's going to take me a lot longer than that. I'm sorry, but I don't learn qu quite that fast. So we are learning slowly. Um, right now we're still working on a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of stuff to figure out and everything has to get translated our passports need to be translated our driver's licenses need to be translated into russian and then we have to get you know this agency and that agency to get this number to get that number we're working our way through it so it's going to take some time we can't uh become citizens for a long time yet anyway but we are hoping that we will be in time for all of our paperwork as far as um temporary residency and permanent residency we're pushing ahead for that appreciate your thoughts and your prayers for us in that and uh, just the overwhelming amount of support. It, honestly, it's just, yeah, I read the comments. I try to read all of them. I, don't, I can't read all of them, but we try to, and the emails, and uh, Anissa as well. It's, it's just really heartwarming. So, again, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for accepting us and, uh, and showing us so much love and support. The other thing that we're working on is vehicles. So we're trying to find a vehicle. Now, I don't know how it works in all of your countries. In Canada, <clears throat> at least in Ontario, every time you change ownership of a vehicle, it has to pass a safety certification, which I think is kind of annoying, but at the same time, it ensures that the vehicle is safe and it keeps a, uh, a record of the vehicle. So, you know, person A bought the vehicle and then he sold it to person B and it had, let's say, 100,000 kilometers on it. And, and then uh, a couple of years later, he sold it to person C and it had, you know, yay much kilometers on it. And there's kind of a record kept of that. So me being, let's say the 10th owner, I can get all that record and I can see the history on this vehicle. Here, apparently it's not like that. I've seen a few vehicles, a few vans, and I'm like, hey, that looks like a good deal. And people are like, oh no, the kilometers are probably wrong. Uh, what do you mean the kilometers are wrong? Well, I guess that happens here. There's no way of keeping track of that. So that is something we have to keep in mind when every time I find a vehicle, I'm like, well, how do you know now if is this thing what they say it is or isn't? Um, there's less less vehicle history here, from what I understand. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys feel free to inform me. Uh, so well, anyway, we are in the market trying to find a vehicle because that would allow us to travel much easier uh, as a family. I can't even find a Yandex here that would take us all. Uh, so to have our own van and be able to cruise around, uh, get out of the city, look around at the country, look at the farmland, uh, also just in the city doing groceries or uh, visiting some of the sites, it would be a lot easier in our own vehicle. And that's something that we would really like to pursue. Uh, well, we are pursuing, I guess, but I would like to get on that this week or next, uh, see if we can buy something and uh, and start being more mobile as a family. That's what we're used to. We're not used to relying on public transportation or uh, you know, getting a ride from somebody. Uh, it's nice to have your own wheels. And then, you know, same with car seats. You can take them and just leave them in the car, right? I just seen this. This is awesome. <laughs> I can't believe the size of these wheels. So this looks like a normal four-wheeler back home. It is admittedly a lot bigger. But look at the size of these tires on here. That's me standing beside this thing. Up here. That's huge. Be a little bit of fun to drive. All right, that's the vehicle that we're looking at. Rear wheel drive. Uh, what do you see? Oh yeah, they painted some, eh? It was... Yep, somebody oh, did some fixing. Uh, That's why I brought rotty. Alexei. Rust. Rust? Rotten. Well, rotten and rust is different. Rotten it would be like a hole all the way through. Uh, rust is just kind of... Rust is... The roof too, looks like they did some work on the roof. <laughs> Maybe it's... Oh, uh, Oh, and the inside's nice. Vinyl on the bottom. Kind of a goofy handle there, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, Very nice clean. Hmm. Not too shabby. I wonder if they can get me an extra seat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
here we got new parts put in. <laughs> Door's been touched up. You can see something there. Painted uh -huh. the rims. I that the they did a good job cleaning it up. That the this is really it's the first time I've seen it. That's actually cool. So ours, the handles here when you pull, and the back doesn't always want to come out, and so people rip the handle off. Mm. And so this one you have to like do more. do it two hands. No, two hands. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's actually smart. I've never seen that before. <laughs> there you go. Little things that impress me. Hey. Eh? Sunroof. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need an extra seat. That would be the big problem. Probably turn this around. Turn it around, add one more seat. Nah, turn around just uh, like this and this. Are you allowed to do that from the side? Yeah. Oh yeah? Maybe. I don't know. Or find another bench just like the back one and set it in here. And then the kids can still scoot in through here. Hmm. Rusty, huh? Good work. Well, yeah, but the price, for the price, probably not bad. I don't know, what do you think? You think it's too rusty? No! We've bought a car! That's Honda, which standing on, in the yard, huh? Yeah. And when we, we suppose it's rather good, but when we lift it up, insurance... All right, so... What do we see in here? That's it's the price there, right? Nah, he'll give a little of discount for us. Oh, that's a nice guy. Anyway, it means oh, not much to me. 2016, there's the year. Ah, uh, 16 the year. One problem here, we got two seats in the front. We could probably add one there pretty easily. Legally. Here, we could add one here, I think. But he says if you turn these around, you could stop by the police pretty quickly. So this one comes up to about here. It would leave us a little bit of room. The kids could still get in if we added the third one here. Uh, here, it would be hard to add a third one because then nobody can get to the back. And they're individual seats because I thought well, maybe you can just put four bums in the back of there. But then you're going to be sitting on top of the seat belts. They're not, it's not a bench. So I'm not sure. Uh, no air conditioning. Uh, we do have this big window that can open up. And the side windows that can open up. And there's no heat in the back right now, only in the front. You get this guy here and blows to the back. And then the heat in the front. It will be difficult to have this. Alright, All right, this is the bottom side. Engine, transmission. Very tiny. Rather new? It looks pretty clean so far. Frame looks good. Fuel tank. Suspension. All in all, it doesn't look terrible. In shape. It's got propane here as well. Back here. So it's dual fuel, propane and gas. Very propane's a lot cheaper to run. I wonder about taking off. Uh, probably a bit more stable. Let's see. Not a lot of room down here to look. Now heat for the back could be remedied because we could tie into here and bring another line to the back so that we'd have another heater. I think that would be easy enough to do. I just noticed here, you can see they've got this goop around the front of the oil pan. And uh, there's leakage, a little bit of seeping oil coming out of here. And of course, as you're driving, it runs all the way down to here. And I'm assuming this is also from that, or it's got another oil issue, because this is sopping wet back here. You can see that's the one. I don't know, it's the... Uh... Yeah. Notice this one in the yard too, I don't know if it's for sale, I'm assuming. It's got no license plate on. It's a nice vehicle too. No price tag on that one! There's no price tag on this one. So this one's got eight seats as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a nice van. Very nice.
All right, everybody, tell me what you think of that vehicle. Uh, I actually really liked it. I've had a lot of Russian people tell me not to buy a Gazelle. And I'm not really sure why. They're not dependable, they say. And uh, it seems like most of you guys actually prefer uh, foreign cars. And I don't really, I'm not sure exactly why. So let me know that down there. Uh, I took this one for a test drive. I really enjoyed it. It was actually very comfortable. Um, it seems sturdy enough. I, I really don't mind it. And um, personally, we feel like we should support the local economy as much as possible. So those are built here. Why, why buy a vehicle that's made in another country? Then we're supporting another country. And I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong with doing that. But what's best for Russia is if we support Russia. So we would prefer to buy a vehicle that's made in this country if we can find one. Um, now, as far as used vehicles are concerned, I suppose it doesn't really matter. We will be buying used. We can't afford to buy a new one. And uh, that used one would be owned by someone in this country. So it's still there. But uh, I really like to, would like to try a gas, either uh, uh, you know, a four-wheel four, four drive model or something else. One issue I had with this particular van is there's not enough seats. There's only nine seats in there and we need 10. So I'm told we can change the registration to allow for more. And, um, you know, that's going to cost a bit more money. Plus we'd have to find another seat. It's possible. It's doable. I'm going to look at another one on, well, this week, Monday or Tuesday, I'm hoping. I'm going to look at another one that has 13 seats. See if that maybe would be more suitable for our family. But we are a family of 10. And... You need room. You need at least 10 seats. Uh, you know, and you need also spots for groceries to put the groceries. Or if you want to take some luggage, you're going to go somewhere. If you want to go on a trip, you need a spot for a tent. You need all those different things. So we need a vehicle that's going to be big enough that we can all fit. Plus have a little bit of extra room be comfortable. I would like four-wheel drive if I can find it. I don't know if that's going to be an option. But it is quite handy. I've been told here in the roads, uh, wintertime, you get snow. Also, springtime, there's mud. It would be handy to have four-wheel drive if I can find it. Other than that, I think those are my only requirements, I guess. So, But I'm curious what you guys thought of this van. The price is right. Um, you know, that's kind of an important thing. We don't like, personally, we don't like spending lots and lots of money on a vehicle. Uh, a van does not make you any money. It's just something that gets you from one spot to another. Now, I do like having a reliable vehicle for my family. If my wife's going to drive it and take the children to town, it's got to be something that's reliable, that's not going to break down on her, that I don't have to worry that she's stuck somewhere. My own vehicle doesn't matter so much. We can always fix that. or um, you know, I, I don't mind if it's as you know, in worse shape. But we don't like buying new. I don't like spending a lot of money and having a lot of dollars, uh, or rubles, I guess in this case, tied up into a vehicle, because it doesn't make money. I'd rather spend that money on a cow, or on a tractor, something that I can earn an income for my family with. And um, and that's why we're looking at used models, so that uh, we can save a bit of money. But at the same time, we want something that's reliable. I don't want I don't want to buy somebody else's junk. It has to be a good van. So anyway, drop your comments down below. As always, we appreciate it. We try to read them all. I do not have time, honestly, for every single comment. I think I spend about an hour and a half every morning just reading emails. And I'm going to have to think of another solution for that because um, it's just taking way too much of our time. And then comments, I try to, again, read probably two hours worth of comments every day. Sometimes more, it depends on what I'm doing. If I have spare time, I pull up my phone a lot, but then, uh, you know, then I'm not focused on my family where my focus should be. And eventually, once we get farming again, I'm going to be busy with farming, so I won't have time for that either. So it's, uh, it's a balancing act. And Anissa is very busy as well. She's got, you know, kids to raise. She does all the editing is done by her. And she does a pile of comments as well. She does all of the Facebook side of stuff, the Instagram. And I don't even know what else she's on. She handles all of that stuff. So uh, it's very busy. Plus, we're both trying to learn the language. We have a language test coming up that needs to be passed, which is going to be interesting, but we're going to do our best. And, uh, yeah, it's just busy. But we try. We really appreciate you all. The heartwarming comments that we've received is just... Uh, I can't, I can't, words can't express it. We're just so grateful for all of you and uh, really appreciate it and look forward to continuing to build our life here, um, integrating into the society, buying a van, like that's what we're doing now and uh, a farm eventually setting up shop here and, and becoming part of the Russian fabric. So someone's enjoying their food. <laughs>
pretty serious eating. Huh? Are you serious? Give me some more. Give me some more. Good morning, everybody. I just uh, finished reading a whole whack of comments. I uh, still try to get as many done as I can, but it's 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 tough. There's so many of them. Uh, I appreciate them. I really do. We both do. I'm going on my face here. It's all red. Anyway, we really appreciate the comments. It's it's heartwarming. I mean, you get a few silly comments, a few dumb ones, uh, and a few that are just downright nasty, but by far, like still 95, 98% of the comments are, are really nice and heartwarming and uh, lots of advice, lots of uh, words of caution. One thing that is always challenging as a foreigner, so if you're thinking of moving here or, uh, or you already live here and uh, you want to offer help, it is challenging because we're, we're new here. We don't understand the language. We don't understand... Um, well, language would be the biggest one, I guess, but just they're, they're, every country has its own way of doing things, things that click, things that work. So obviously in Canada, we understand those things and we, we have a network of people. I've used the same real estate lawyer for the last, I don't know, eight or 10 years and we trust him. It's a partnership, right? Um, you know, banking, we use the same bank manager for I don't know how long. These are relationships that are built up that we, we trust these people and we can work with. Mm. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hello. Hi. So on those lines of thinking, we really appreciate all the offers of help. Uh, there's also been a lot of people that have offered us different kinds of deals, land deals, or uh, you know, just real estate stuff, basically. But we don't know anyone uh, at this point yet, right? So it's it's a little early to uh, just jump in on a deal and make an arrangement. We need time to build relationships, learn people. Uh, I need to find a really good accountant again, uh, another good real estate lawyer. Obviously we have Timor, so we really trust him and his advice, but it just takes time to develop all those things. So I don't want anyone to think that we don't appreciate it. We obviously do. We're very new here. Uh, and anyone that's gone out and be like, hey, I got this deal or I got that deal or whatever it might be, we really, really appreciate that. But it's gonna take time for us to sort through all that, get our, our bearings in this new country, uh, if it was in our country and we got a deal like that, it, we would know exactly what, what that would take. Uh, I could drop the documents off at, at the right guy. I know exactly where it's got to go. But here, that's going to take time. A lot of time. We are super excited to announce that we were told our bank accounts are no longer frozen. So we're super excited about that. What it came down to, we had to drop off a bunch of documents to prove uh, the sale of our home in Canada. And then also to... I uh, tried to explain to them that uh, we have a YouTube channel, we're vloggers, this is uh, our only source of income right now, this is what we do, and uh, you know we have donations from generous people like you, and uh, that's that's where we're making our money. So it was kind of hard to explain that, hard to, like I can't provide documents for that kind of stuff. Obviously we can from the farm, So, but the combination of the two, everything seems to be taken care of, they, uh, they reviewed it, they had a meeting with us, and... Um, so we were pretty happy to hear that it was unfrozen. Other than that, yeah, hopefully it doesn't happen again. They have it on our file now. That, you know, there's X amount of transactions happening. They know who we are now, and it should not get flagged again. And I didn't know this, but I've learned by reading all the comments down below, and I'd encourage everyone else to do it. Read the comments. There's a lot of good advice that we're getting down there from people. This happens in, like, piles of countries. I, I've read comments from people who've moved to Canada, who've moved to... Uh, Germany, somebody moved to Switzerland, who all faced these same kinds of issues. They moved to the country and, and then ended up getting their accounts froze or um, you know something else happened because they, when they moved, all of a sudden they have no history in that country and they're bringing some money in. And so it shows a transaction like, hey, who is this guy and where did this money come from? So if you're planning on coming here, keep that in mind. This uh, You're going to need some documentation for that, which is logical, but make sure you have it. Some documents to show the sale of your house, the sale of your farm, the sale of your tractor, whatever it might be. Bring some documents along to show that, hey, look, this is what's going on in this country. Could even be tax records, maybe. This is what's going on over there. I'm bringing that with me. It's This is what's going to happen over here. 
not a problem. And I would advise you do that before uh, you start putting money in the account. Go to the bank because I actually talked to two, three other guys that are here that moved here and that's what they did. They went to the bank first and said, look, I'm so-and-so, I sold this, I'm moving to this country, this kind of money is going to be coming in the account. And the bank said, okay, no problem, it's all good. Uh, and they didn't have an issue. We, on the other hand, didn't do that, didn't really think about it. I know some of you say, well, you should think about it. There's a lot of stuff to think about when you're coming. It's just, you know, we got a lot of kids. You got to look after things. You're looking after your house, trying to figure out where to get groceries. Can't remember everything. Hindsight, yes, we should have thought about it. Bring the paperwork, go to the bank, show the bank. You will not have an issue. God bless you all. We'll catch you in the next one. Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far